Hi, it's Steph. Welcome back to my garden. It is now the first week of May, and this will be the second garden tour of the 2022 growing season. Um, I did one a few weeks ago, and it was the very beginning of spring, and things were just starting to emerge. It's been a couple of weeks since, and things are definitely more green, and we have some more things blooming, so I thought it'd be a good time to do an updated garden tour. So come along with me, and I'll show you around. The first thing looking really beautiful right now are these tulips. I actually bought this um, mix in a bag from Lowe's at the end of the fall on a really deep discount, about 75% off. And they're absolutely beautiful. This bed is also filling out. I have the pink creeping phlox that is blooming. A peony in the corner there. This spirea is a My Monet pur purple effect and it has just started to leaf out. My Asiatic lilies are starting to leaf out as well. This perennial allium is all leafed out. This is either amethyst bubbles or millennium. I have both varieties in my garden, but I don't remember which one I put here in the front bed. This rose is also all leafed out, and I actually have one a little bit further down in the bed that's doing amazing. This is a David Austin Eustacia V, and this came in a bare root. And my bare root roses never seem to really take off, but the one that I got in a pot is doing a lot better. It could also just be the variety of the rose. I have a little cloche here that I turned over on top of a Japanese maple seedling. I didn't want it to get trampled or pulled, so I put this um, Dollar Tree waste basket upside down on it so that I would know it was there and I wouldn't pull it or weed it by accident. These are bobo hydrangeas and they're just starting to get leaf nodes or buds. This conifer here I'm actually going to move shortly to a different spot. I just planted it last fall so it's not entirely rooted yet so I still have the opportunity to move it. This rose here is the Olivia Rose Austin, and this is the one that I got in a pot, and it is just so vigorous. I hope that it does well this year. This is only the second year in my garden. The bed I was just filming in, this is it when you come down the driveway. I have another peony here in the corner. This is a Festivus Maximus. It's like a white peony and I really love the way that this phlox is looking lining the rock retaining wall this Japanese maple was also pruned last week and this is an ornamental dwarf red variety Here is a tiny line nine bark, and it's just starting to leaf out. And some more of the flocks. 
This peony here is a Shirley Temple, and it's another white, fluffy type. These two Japanese maples are our first Japanese maples in our garden, and they are blood good variety. There's two, there's one here and another there. And just recently, we planted three ivory halo dogwood shrubs, red twig dogwood. We're going to eventually think about connecting these two maple trees and make like an island bed here with the dogwood in the middle. Maybe add a couple more things like ornamental grass and so forth. Our heritage river birch is looking lovely and it's actually starting to leaf out. I have another flush of daffodils going on over here. These are called precocious, and these are my first season with these. Really pretty. I planted these a little bit different than the other clusters that I have around the garden. Um, I kind of dotted these around this bed and I strategically placed them behind some daylily foliage. So as the daffodil foliage aged, hopefully it will disguise some of it. I have another Mimone Perthful Effect Wygela here. That is also beginning to leaf out, as well as this Japanese maple. I love the way that sedum looks when it first emerges in this perfectly little round clump. This bed does need some mulch. We'll get to it in the next couple of weeks. And this Carex looks like it could use a cutback. I have this grouping here of Mai Tai Geum, and it is full of buds this year. So any day now, these should open up. The magnolia has now dropped all of its blooms and it's beginning to leaf out.
and these tulips here are beautiful. These are last year's tulips and they're just starting to be faded at this point. I have some more sedum in this bed. I believe it's Autumn Joy and some perennial grass as well as a variegated iris in the center. I have some astilbe that I have dotted along the edge and it'll get shaded as the canopy from the magnolia fills in. In this grouping of tulips, I also have this angelique tulip and this is a little bit later bloomer. So these are just starting to come into bloom now. My stone crop Angelina has started to fill out even more. And I love the way that it looks creeping over the block here, the cobblestone. In the corner there, I have a quick fire hydrangea that's also leafing out. And here's the back angle of this bed. So I have the um, quick fire. I have some more Angelina stone crop that has sort of just seeded itself or spread here and I've left it because I really like it. I'm hoping it will become a nice ground cover and offer some yellow in this bed. The astilbe is dotted all along this edge. Here at the bottom of the trellis, I have two clematis. This is its second year, so it's still only a baby. And a Zephyrine Druin Rose, right in the center, that I just added this year. I actually found it at Lowe's for $9.98, which was amazing. The window boxes are pretty much spent now. Only a couple of blooms to go, but the pots are all budded and ready to put on the next show. And the clear star back here is this Katsura Japanese Maple. The sun is starting to go down, but when the sun hits it, it's like a little ball of fire. The limelight hydrangea back here are also leafing out. And the grasses are starting to get some green. These are Hamlin grass. I have some more Japanese maple over on the patio that need to get planted out. We've been pot growing them until they are big enough to plant out, but I think this year we'll get a couple of them in the landscape. I love the way that this terracotta bowl is looking with some more of this Angelina sedum, some hens and chicks. and some more sedum that I stuck in here. Sedum roots so well. So if any of it ever breaks off when you're transplanting it or handling it, shove it in some dirt and then you get some more plants. This is my orange dream Japanese maple and it has the most beautiful yellow color in the spring.
This one is a Moonrise Japanese Maple, and it's also just starting to open up. If you haven't picked up on it yet, I have a bit of a collection and a love for Japanese Maples. This is a more dwarf variety of Japanese Maple, and it is beautiful also. It's called a Mikawa Yatsabusa. And it has this beautiful layering effect of foliage. It's stunning. In this back garden bed, there are a couple of things also in bloom. This burgundy glow ajuga is blooming. This is actually a division that I stuck here last year and it has a single bloom. I'm just happy to see that it took. I have some Joe Pie Weave that's just starting to emerge here. And some Alexander Loose Strife, which has beautiful foliage and a yellow bloom. This plant here is called Pomolneria or Lungwort, and it has really pretty tiny blooms and beautiful foliage. Look at the variation in color of the blooms. Pinks and purples. I'll see if I can look up the variety and if I can I will pop it up on the screen. This is a Magnolia Anne and it's just now at the end of its bloom. This is also a ground cover. This is called Dead Nettle or Lamium and it is also blooming. I find a lot of the ground cover to bloom in spring. I don't know if there are any ground cover that bloom in summer. Here are some poppies. I'm noticing a bunch of poppies that I sowed in the snow back in the winter that are now all leafed out. This dogwood has also leafed out. This is the second season in this spot. It was in a really windy spot, so I had a hard time kind of getting going, but it's doing okay now. I love the way this golden dead nettle looks with this burgundy glow ajuga. The hellebore are all flushed out. I gave it a trim and some fertilizer a couple months ago and it responded well. I have some iris in the back. That is a purple iris, Japanese iris. And here is my other hellebore. These go for a really long time and they look really nice for quite a while. I have this European ginger that I bought at a garden fair a couple of years ago and it's a really really pretty ground cover. I wish it would spread better for me though. It um, doesn't spread too aggressively. Some people say it is but not for me. Here I have a dicentra or bleeding heart. I have a Brennera, it's blooming. This is a um, supposed to be a really large leaf variety, but the leaves never really get large for me. I'm not sure why. Um, if anyone knows, I would love to know. This Geranium Macorizae is looking beautiful. It's actually starting to put on some buds and it blooms really pretty pink. 
and it actually has a really nice fragrance also. I have some more Bleeding Heart over here. These daffodils are now spent and this lilac is up next to bloom. I have another astilbe here and some columbine that's starting to bud up. The Solomon seal has come up as well as some sensitive fern here in the corner. birds are really crazy this evening <laughs> very vocal here's another ground cover this one is called chocolate chip ajuga and it's also in bloom and some daffodil foliage this is a woodland bed eastern redbud all budded up well, this is actually what's considered its bloom. And then the foliage emerges. I have this dogwood here that is not really healthy. It's lost a bunch of branches from deer, but it's hanging on. So we keep it around and it has really pretty pink blooms. So I'm hoping that at some point it gets healthier and puts out some more branching and you know continues to live in our garden this is our foundation side of the house but this evergreen is looking really pretty i only planted it last year i don't remember the name of it but i'll see if i can find the tag but it is um, filling out really nicely and here i have a bunch of asiatic lilies and they're all leafed out. And I put these baskets here to try to deter bunnies, but I don't know. I mean, it seems to be working okay, but I think spray is gonna work the best because once they get too tall, I have to take the basket off. So I've been using it kind of like a fence. Here I have some lupin. I grew this from seed last year and it was the second or third attempt I've had at growing lupin, but it finally worked. And it seems to be happy here. There's another Japanese maple. This one is called Fire Glow. Iris. And my candy corn spirea in the front here with some more Lupin. We recently pruned this blue atlas cedar. It had gotten really unruly. The echinacea and the phlox is all leafed out. And the star of the spring show in this bed is this Semfall Spirea. I cut this back by half last year, so it's a little smaller this year, but it needs size control. And it's a beautiful shrub. This is the rose that I transplanted a couple of weeks ago, and it's a little behind on the leafing out, but it is leafing out, so that's a good sign. The wine and roses, Wyagela, is also leafing out. And this Norway spruce is putting out its spring growth. Pretty soon it's going to be full of these little green fuzzy pieces at the end. It's actually really pretty evergreen.
limelight standards are leafing out. These front wall daffodils are pretty much spent now. I had Ice King and Ice Follies, but these two groupings at the end here are called Cheerful or Cheerfulness, and they are now in bloom. They're really pretty um, multiple bloom daffodil. Some are this pretty cream color with yellow centers and some are this buttery yellow and they look really really pretty with the purple phlox that's also now in bloom thanks for coming along on this second spring tour and I'll catch you in the next one